Alrighty guys, welcome to a brand new series here on BBG. We um, we're trying out something totally different that we haven't done before. It's kind of be this will be like vlog, right? We decided yeah, sure. to be like we're gonna release both the audio as a podcast, but also vlog cast. Vlog cast. That's that's the thing. So we're doing that audio, and then we're also gonna post this on YouTube, obviously for uh, for the video and audio if you prefer that. So the uh, the for sure topics that we're gonna talk about in each one of these episodes will be. Um, first and foremost, um, we're going to talk about games that we're excited about. And this is going to be anything that's either up and coming, already out that we haven't played, just anything we're pumped about. Like, even if it's going to be like an old school 64 game that we're like, man, I always wanted to play that, and we found it at Goodwill the other day, so like, now we're playing it. You know, something like that. We're going to talk about, um, any beers that we're really excited about, ones that we've, uh, haven't had the opportunity to taste or have recently and we want to share with you that we haven't had on the channel or something like that and then also any channel update news to follow that so that's going to be our general format um i'm not going to preface it in each and every episode like this but for this one you know to kind of clue you in so we are drinking tonight vanilla porter uh one of our personal faves on the channel from breckenridge brewery here in colorado now this if you haven't had this it's just the it's best. the granddaddy it is if you, like, um, if you like beer, you're doing yourself a disservice not to have it. Exactly. So it, it's a it's like a near five beat rating. Like um, we haven't given. A, I would. I, I mean, if it were if it were if it were my scale. Yeah. Like is it, it a five beater? It, it like my scale would be defined. This is based off of vanilla powder. Like personally. Yeah. For me, it's like a tie between this and then a Yeti from Great Divide. Um, they have a few different variations on that, which we'll get to later. But for now, we are going to the first topic, which is games that we are excited about. So, the first one, and this is one that um, that I'm particularly excited about. Um, Most of you probably know about this one, right? Um, Kenny, Kenny had heard a little bit about it as well, but this um, got back to 100 percent, well, look, well over 100 percent on Kickstarter. This is um, as as far as I can tell, this is pronounced uh, ukulele or ukulele. It's a pun. Right, it's um it's made by some of the some of the guys from Rare, um, which is a game studio that did um, Banjo Kazooie and had their hand also in Donkey Kong Country, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, that whole series, Gold Knight. If you had a Nintendo sixty four, you probably were playing. You pl- you the owned Rare one games. or two Rare games, or else you were Perfect Dark. Yeah, just so many great titles. Uh, Jet Force Gemini. Right, and they're coming out. So this is um they see they they met their goal. This is clear back on on the six. Let's see. Yeah, on the 16th, um, they started it before, but they raised, what is that, 2,090,000 euros, um, which I'm not sure what that equates to roughly, but that's that's a lot of money, obviously. I don't know their, how much that is in American. But their goal was something to the equivalent of like $200,000, um, US dollars that is, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'll put the official amount here on the screen. But... Uh, Regardless, it it was it was well over backed and well it was re- came fucking. Tough. It made it. It made it. It's coming. It's coming. Don't worry, yep. you'll be here. I'm that excited. I can't even talk about. I don't. I don't know where it's at as far as like development. Probably not that far. If it's just got, like, if it just now got the uh, backing, but right. No, but it's it's awesome, man. Like, um, I wish I had. Uh, I should have brought up a video for it. But the point is, it's gonna be kind of like Banjo Kazooie. You have like a sidekick, and then you have your main character. But overall, it's it's a it's the same kind of style as Banjo Kazooie, like the same adventure platforming, I guess you would call it. Um, with also very similar music, some really like That's xylophone good. heavy That's stuff. That's like when I think of the rare, you know, I always think of those like. You know, kind of like really good soundtrack. Not necessarily cutesy, but like really happy, like right. peppy stuff. And it all and it had a lot of xylophone. That's my, what I remember. My favorite was like in Conquer's Bad Fur Day because it it like the entire game was like this, like one overarching theme. Right. But like depending on where you are in the world, it was like played by different instruments and stuff like that. Same with Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, yeah. Remember, like you go into the pirate world and it switched over to like accordion, and like uh, yeah. if you go over into the like swamp world, it switched to like tubas and like all kinds of stuff. It was awesome. So this game is coming out, same guys, and it's looking to be awesome. Has um, what has Rare done anything like notable since then? I mean, they got bought by Microsoft, and then what happened? Right. Like Perfect Dark Zero. Ooh. Right, but that was you saw what that was. Yeah. Like I, I don't really consider that a great success. But, but like it's it's they haven't really you know emerged. if if not 
I don't know if this is going to have the rare name on it. Probably not. They're using it for marketing. Created but... by Playtonic Games. Okay, so okay. So I, I don't know if they're going to be the, the distribution company, but... Um, but I either way, that... like it, it's good to have like a rare revival. So, oh, or a rare revival. Rare revival. As indicated by the top, it's awesome. So, uh, so we're really excited about that. So I'm going to hand it to you for this next one. This is a game that I was excited about. I heard about it uh, last year at E3, and at the time, I thought it was like a PlayStation exclusive, mm-hmm. but um, it's now coming to PC as well. It's like this, it's it's just like an exploration game. Like, no Man's Sky. When I think of it, I think of like, um, did you ever play Spore? Uh, no, I, I can't well, say okay, that Well, okay, so did. Spore, like... The, the, the spore is like broken up into f- like five sections. Right. Like the f- the fifth section is like space exploration. Okay. And like that's what I think of when I think of this game. Like it's all space exploration. Um, you can fly to different planets and like um, it's all procedurally generated. Nice. So like I'm down your for that. your universe or whatever will not be like anybody else's. Cool. It's almost got like a. Not not necessarily like super Star Warsy, but like some elements definitely remind me of some Star Wars. It's like Wars a classic that, sci-fi, right? Kind of thing, but like, but some of like the creatures mixed with like the really yeah. like and advanced the, architecture. And the thing about that is like, you know, when, the more you explore, like dogfighting, the more stuff you see. Like this is the rare like, um, most of the time you're just gonna come across like nothing, like just planets to explore. Like okay, the, these kind of major events like finding dinosaurs or like a space fight is supposed to be like. You know, pretty the, rare. the rarity, like yeah. you know, that's what you play for. Gotcha. So that's and, awesome. Uh, man. I'm pretty sure that it was this company, but um, when they were at E3 in 2014, um, the year before, they had had like some kind of uh, massive fire at their uh, offices and like lost a lot of the progress on this game. Yeah. And had to pretty much start from scratch, so that probably set them back a little bit. And I'm not sure what the release date on this is, but I know it's coming to PlayStation and PC, so I'm excited about this one. Yeah, uh, right now, platforms to be announced, release date to be announced. So, if you look on the Wikipedia page, though, it says... Right. But according... This is the Hello Games sure. uh, official, like, their their press site. So that's um, that's something to look for. Uh, indie developer Hello Games, No Man's Sky. So that does look awesome, man. Um, okay, on to the next one. Axiom Verge is out on Steam and PS4. I think originally it was planned to just be a PS4 exclusive, but now is on Steam. And uh, we're planning on doing this on the channel, doing a playthrough of this one. But it's essentially, it's got some a lot of ties to Super Metroid in terms of art style and uh, and how it plays, like how it's the same kind of platforming elements, which I think is going to be yeah. awesome. Because I was a big fan of the Metroid series, um, not so much Prime, me as well, but like Fusion like, and uh, uh, Super like Metroid. When I think lot. of Metroid, like Prime is fine. I guess I never really got into him, but like I'm all about the side scrolly like Super Metroid. You know, a Metroid Friggin fusion. Sam is kicking the shit out of Riley. So, yeah. yeah, like the Metroidvania, if you will. Yeah. Style of uh, thing. Right. And uh, you know, I I think that this is cool. I think it all harkens back to something like Shovel Knight. Right. You know, I th- I think Shovel Knight really uh, you know revived a lot of interest in the you know the the, the cool side scrolling modern like you know side scroller yep. game that. You know, it was a bit retro, but like modern. So you know, I, I like. I'm all about games like this. I think it's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Did you take it? Did you see those bosses? Yeah. Those looked freaking cool. Like, see, that's that's the kind of stuff I want. I want epic 2D boss fights. I want like really cool weapon upgrades. You know, like that's that's the stuff that I really dig. See, in I, I like I like that. Like that specifically made me think of like um, the 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 color palette makes me think of like Castlevania one. Right. Yeah, dark, and uh, it's got some nice like orange, it, it, it pops, orange and purples, you know, like, you know, like that's this. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, man. So, Axiom Verge looks yeah. good. Awesome stuff. Uh, now, this game has been out for a bit. I'm this sure everybody's game. heard of this. Uh, Kenny and I have been playing through this like crazy lately. Yes, we though. have. Uh, Hotline Miami 2, wrong number. This is the sequel to the one that we've done a playthrough on. This will probably um, not make it onto the channel. I mean, they, Maybe. they call it a sequel, but it, it has some ties back to stuff beforehand and after, so um, I don't know what you call that. It's, it's. I mean, it, it's a sequel. It's the second game. I mean, who? I mean, yeah. Timeline. It's so who cares freaking about yeah. good. Like, if you haven't played Hotline, Hotline Miami, go check. You can look at one of our videos. Go check it out. Um, it'll give you kind of a sample of like what the gameplay feels like, what but, it looks like, and like two. It's a different game. Everything about Hotline Miami like jacked up to eleven. I know. It's not like oh, we're gonna like make it 
kind of like easy, like Hotline Miami started yeah. out. It could be a nice learning curve. It was well, Hotline Miami Two is just like fucking you know, throws you right into it. Yeah, it's like immediately ninety percent as hard as Hotline Miami was. Yes, and then even and it goes above it. And like I, I think it's cool because it doesn't feel like an expansion pack or like you know it's just like new something. levels. Like right. it's a brand new game. Everything new is story. way bigger. Yep. Like the levels are like punishingly long. Yep. Like it is fucking hard. And cool alterations too. Like they they force you into like um, some unique level design where like you have to use um, instead of just picking your mask and then having like either melee or guns, you can now there's like they force you into ones where you have to use a specific gun or you have yeah, to use there only there are, one there are melee. like certain characters and like every time you use those characters, they have like. Each character has, like, a different set of abilities that right. you can choose to utilize. And, you know, the levels that you play through as those characters are, like, geared to that specific character's, you know, abilities. And that's mm-hmm. that's really cool. And it's a lot of fun. And uh, you should definitely go check it out. I mean, um, it's it's running for, like, 15 bucks on Steam. Don't play it if you have, like, anger issues. <laughs> or play it if you do have anger issues. I mean... I get YouTube. anger issues when I play this game. Yeah, no, it's it's nuts. It's uh, it's frustrating, but at the same time, it's one of those games you feel so good about yeah. like accomplishing. Immensely something. rewarding. Yep. So on to the next one. Um, this is just a, sn- a snippet of uh, of some news that we really don't know a whole lot about. But we love Zelda, so yeah. So Zelda about anything. Kind of expanding on what they did with um with uh, Four Swords. Which is, they had this multiplayer game that originally came out for the Game Boy Advance. Then a long they did a, time ago, like 2003 or something. We played right. that shit in middle school. And they did a they did a GameCube release as well. Yeah. And uh, so it's like kind of like a co-op Zelda adventure game, but it's it's not nearly on the same like level as the as the rest of the story. But but it, you can see it looks like, kind of like um, Four Swords with like the art design or like gameplay style of uh, A Link Between Worlds. Right. And it, and and which is what it should be. I want an updated Four Swords, and that's what this looks like. Yeah. You know. So that's really cool. We'll we'll hear about that later. I'm sure we'll be. It, it gives us we'll something to look forward that. to since uh, Zelda U or whatever got pushed we, back another yeah, year. Yeah, Zelda U, garbage. That's I mean, disappointing. garbage that it got pushed back. I I'm, mean, that's I'm good. Very like it, you know, if that's if that's what they have to do to make it you know everything that they wanted to, that's fine. Whatever. Right. I don't have a Wii U anyway, so it wasn't you know still exciting though. Not imminent, but cool to see I, I would have liked Zelda for stuff. it to be out, but you know I'll wait. Right. Whatever. Yep. You, do what you got to do, Nintendo. I trust you. Co-op puzzle solving is awesome, so look for that. Um, this is just something I thought was really cool. Uh, someone took the Unreal Engine, which uh, games like, um, well, originally like um, Unreal Tournament and uh, more famously Gears of War, I guess you would say, because that, that game definitely caught, I think, the most publicity of the Unreal Engine games so far. Essentially, they took Mario, took like the 3D rendering of him in Super Mario 64, and then put it in Unreal Engine. So it looks pretty cool. Now, this, <laughs> now they created uh, Bomb on Battlefield with this, right? Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that this? Now, the sad thing is Nintendo actually shut these guys down. I know. Cease and desist. I think this is really cool, though. So, I think the creativity here is, fuck what, you, Nintendo. is what's really cool. Like, somebody took the time, put some good effort into this, and, and put some good game design. Because, like, look how good this looks. And I, it's not like they were selling this. Right. I mean, maybe they were going to sell it. But, like, I mean, come on. Not really, man. It's... G- give them a break. These are your fans that are, like, going out of their way to celebrate you. Mm-hmm. And give your games the modern touch that sometimes you're reluctant to give them. So, right. shut up. I mean... God, it's really cool. Don't be um, a dick, Shiggy. A really... Yeah. <laughs> Which, interesting thought. He's no longer in charge of hardware. I know, good. He's, that? he's yeah. like 60 years old. Yeah, he's getting old, I mean, I, lo- I respect the man, but, you it's know, it's, it's, time for, it's time for some, you know, fresh eyes on things. Right. I mean, just look at those shadows and stuff. Like, looks, look, at, looks, look at the reflections. Great. Like, that's just cool looking. So, I, I thought that was a cool, um, just, you know, something to... Something to put in, just not that it's a real thing or it's gonna be a thing. It's just it was just interesting. To it's do. our vlog cast, right? <laughs> so now I do a few beers that um, that uh, that I've heard about or that uh, we both been talking about that uh, that we want to try eventually. Devil Dancer. If anyone knows where the heck, I mean, if you if you live somewhere that you can get this, let me know. I will pay shipping and everything. Like I I need a crate of this, you know, a, a four pack, you know, here. 12%, 112 IBUs. Like this, it's it's a triple IPA. I do, you mean, have, do you have the do you have the snazzy little like glass snifter to put or whatever? Snifter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I do not. Uh, well, I do. You gotta I, get it. I do have some fancy glasses, but not no. Uh, Are you no, pour it into your Buffalo Wild Wings glass. Yes, I will. Might as well. So Devil Dancer triple IPA. If you know where you can get that, uh, let me know because I'm willing to pay some money to to get this here. 
is uh, is is something I definitely want to try. Twelve percent. Yeah, man. Doesn't fuck around. Cubs in four packs. I'm sure it's like twelve bucks a four pack or something. It kind of bums me out, like when you pay for like alcohol content as opposed to. Like, I want a six-pack. Like, if I have to pay a little bit more to get a six-pack of something, that's fine. Like, four-packs just bum me out. Right. Personal thing. So, where's this? Grand Rapids? Ah, uh, Michigan. Michigan. Is that the only... Yeah, that's the only... That's the only brewery I see on here. Um, Gotta be somewhere you can get it, though. But, uh, Founders, Founders Bre- Brewing Co. Founders Brewing Co. So, if you live by one, let me know. Or live <laughs> by the Founders Brewing Co., apparently, let me know. Um, or a pub that sells it. Another one, uh, Barrel Aged Yeti. Now, I know, I know this one is, it, see, it comes in the 750 milliliter, which it looks, is... It looks like a champagne bottle. Right. Like, and it might as well be champagne, man. That, like, I... 12.5%. Of, of the other Yetis that we've tried, you know, every Yeti I've had has been perfect. And, and I'm anxious to kind of just get my hands on their whole lineup of Yetis. Oh, this is what I like. Food pairings. Yeah. Steak. Uh, blue, cheese. blue cheese pass, vanilla, vanilla cheesecake. cheesecake, and brownies. Well, yeah. You see, I think they Obviously. should just there should just be a comma after every one of these and just put like chicken wings, beer, and brownies, and chicken wings. <laughs> you know, just chicken wings. Beer, pairs well. <laughs> every beer goes well with chicken wings. <laughs> exactly. Let's be real here. So barrel aged yeti. I'll be going up to Denver at some point to get some of that. Um, and then also oatmeal yeti. This is another imperial imperial stout, but this one is served in the uh, nope twenty two ounce bottles or the five gallon kegs. Interesting. Five Ooh, it goes cakes. well with duck poutine. Chicken wings. I eat that shit all the time. <laughs> Banana cream pie. <laughs> Get it at Walmart. <laughs> yep, yep. So that's awesome. Um, those are the beers that we're pumped about. It's just Yeti, Yeti, and Devil Dancer. We'll have some more next time. But uh, but I'm serious about this Devil Dancer. If you live near Founders Brewing Co., let me know. Um, so those are the games. Any other anything else you were thinking of while we we're while we we're talking? Hmm. Seems there was something, but could be something evaporated from my mind. Yeah. Um, Okay, so another snippet. Um, We are uh, a quick bit, if you will. The um, I'm in the process of uh, building a new PC. I'm 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 parting it out right now because exciting stuff. Yeah, getting some parts in and everything. Um, We're upgrading the one that we're currently using. um, We've used for. I mean, it records everything. You guys have seen all the footage has been done through this one PC, um, which has been really faithful to us. And there's honestly nothing wrong with it. I just it's time to upgrade. When you, I mean, when we start doing this stuff, you just kind of you kind of get hooked on like, oh yeah, you know, what what do I want next? Like, yep. oh, this is great, but what else do I want? Yeah, you know, something else comes out, and you're like, oh fuck, gotta have it. Right, and now I'm done with school. Like, I'm I'm excited to like spend a little bit of money on something cool like this. So um, I'm upgrading to a, to an Intel platform. Right now we're running all AMD stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know about the tech stuff, uh, there's just two major competing companies, essentially AMD and Intel, but I'm switching to an Intel build. Um, I've got roughly a little over half the parts, right? Yeah, yeah little, we were looking at it earlier. But um, once, this, once the system build is complete, which I foresee being probably within the next two months, um, we will start our Wind Waker playthrough. And that's going to be really exciting. The reason we're doing it on the Intel platform is uh, since we don't have a capture card, we're actually emulating this on a Dolphin Dolphin emulator. Um, so come at us, Nintendo. Yeah. So um, it runs about a million times better on an Intel platform than it will an AMD platform. Uh, single reason I'm upgrading. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it'll be it'll run a lot better, and I want it to be a good experience for both the audience and us. Um, just to have like a solid experience on, on Dolphin because it does honestly run a thousand percent better on Intel. It's just ridiculous. So let's talk about like, I mean, I, I assume that maybe a lot of people that watch us know about AMD versus Intel, but right. you know, maybe some don't like what are like, I, I, there, it's not just like, Oh, Pepsi or Coke. Like there are right. like real differences between like oh, AMD yeah. and Intel. And in my mind, it all comes down to like, Okay, well, price, price versus to performance, like it gets a well, it's like price versus quality in some regards, but price per, price to performance gets thrown around a lot. The thing about AMD is they put out like comparably powerful you know cards to uh, Intel, but they're a little bit cheaper. But the trade off is they you run get, hotter. Yeah, they you know take more power. Right. 
And we're talking about graphics cards, the the things that are going to power the games that you play if you're if you're doing PC. I mean, if you, if you play on a console, your your console does have a GPU, like a graphics processing unit, but it's um, but it's it's a little more integrated. You don't upgrade it like things like that. You just buy another console like when it comes out. But with GPU or with uh with computers, you know, you can you have the kind of the opportunity to switch out individual parts as long as it's all compatible. But um, with AMD like Kenny said, they, they consistently for the past eight, I can eight years have at least eight years have put out stuff that runs a lot hotter, which is a, a serious concern. If, if you live in, you know, an environment that doesn't have really good air conditioning or something, or like, uh, you know, heat leads to failure of components overall, like depending on how hot it really gets. Um, you have to be sure that you've really got a case that like, you know, can allow for good air circulation, that you've got right. proper, you know, means to cool it down. There's right. like water cooling, things like that. Yep. And so a lot of that goes into consideration when, when we go through these builds and everything. But uh, but essentially, um, I mean, I've put, I've put some good money into the into the PC I have now, but it's, it's, uh, it's really looking at performance gains for both uh for both editing the videos that we're going to put out and as well as a uh, good performance in emulation which is important uh just for entertainment purposes but also a little bit for the channel and everything but i'm excited for the performance boosts in uh in productivity i mean because um with intel and its uh kind of sister company if you will uh nvidia they they commonly pair well together um, for for GPU and other components, uh, CPU primarily, um, they they play well with things uh, with Dolphin, like I mentioned earlier, but also with editing software, specifically the Adobe Suite, um, really caters towards Intel stuff. So it's like if you're gonna put out a platform and um, use that platform, and you're gonna favor one part of hardware over the or one company's hardware over the other, I'm gonna get to be a little more prone to that, but. Um, I don't know. It'll be really exciting. So we'll be putting out a build log for um, once I get all the parts in. I'll do kind of like a you know a time lapse video of, of putting it all together and everything. Kind of give you a, a brief tour of, of the BBG Studios, which are super elaborate. Let me tell you, studio. The dogs are the are the favorite are the uh, clear clear winner in this. Yeah, scenario. there's actually not. Uh, a computer screen behind us. Yeah, <laughs> this is called technology. Technology. Yep, it's a cheap piece of fabric that you saw earlier. But um, yeah. So so that's uh, that's kind of the the haps in terms of BBG lately. Um, what uh, what else can you think of that you? Well, kicking off our our brand new series here. We're really excited about this. Like this is this is something that we've uh, we've thought about, and uh, it's cool to just vent about stuff, but also just to talk about stuff that we. Uh, that we're passionate about. So. We have a lot of things to say that like we don't necessarily get to. Right. We don't have the means to like in a normal video. Right. In the context of like a gameplay, you wouldn't necessarily just rant about um, you know, AMD, AMD versus Intel, or you know, a million games that we want to play, or something like that. Yeah. So it's fun. It's fun to talk about it in this setting. And say, but we'll do it again with Alex sometime. Yeah. Yeah. We we're expecting him tonight, but uh, things come up. Life happens. But um. Uh, for sure in the next one Alex will be here so we'll look forward to that and um, I think on that we're gonna wrap it up been fun oh yeah once again vanilla porter if you haven't had it get your hands on it this stuff is awesome from Breckenridge Brewing Company I know they don't distribute nationwide but if you can get it it's a tasty treat we'll say that call uh, Smokey the bandit yep maybe they'll Ship you some from exactly. the '80s, Burt Reynolds. <laughs> need some damn Devil Dancer. Ship me, ship me some of that. I'll ship you some. I just Vanilla watched. Porter. I just watched that Trade Archer off. episode. Yeah. Where uh, Archer's mom is like sleeping with Burt Reynolds. Oh yeah, it was like two or three episodes of that one with Burt. I'm like finally like I've only watched up to like season uh, two like I think. Three I think. So yeah, like, I'm working my way through season three now. Yep. Watched like Heart of Archness a few days ago and. Awesome. I'm just, I Archer's do a, so good. I could do an Archer vlog. Yep, yep, yep. That's we're we're talking about Archer next time on uh, the BBG. What do we call it? The vlogcast? Vlogcast. Ten- tentatively. Title TBD. TBD. TDB, gentlemen. Potentially <laughs> vlogcast? I don't know. <laughs> All right. If yeah. there's a title on it, when we put this up, then that's what the title is. Don't listen to us. Boom. That's it. Next the time. Beatcast vlog screen time. Good. Have fun. <laughs> Watch things. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha.